Great Shaker Classic XL. It's Richardville, what's happening? All right, how's it going? We're back. We're back. Oh, hey, big face truck. What's going on, big face truck? All right, what's happening, everybody? We're back. We're going to talk EIDL. I know this is two in a row. What do you think, Dean? Two in a row. What what happened to Dean? I'm here. <clears throat> yeah, two two in a row. Can you believe it? I know, man. You've been busy today. Been busy. Uh, if you want to know what that is in the background, we're we are forex trading. You know, right now, why not? Why not do it? We got USD uh, against Japanese, and of course, it's going up. Right there, it is. Uh, USD Canadian. That's up too. That's up by point zero six. Um, this here is down by a 0.01%, but it has a nice rise in those candlesticks. Now, twice in one day, did hell freeze over? John wants to know that. What do you think? Did it? Uh, <laughs> it might. It might. <clears throat> it might. So, EIDL. So, a lot of people took it. A lot of businesses took it. A lot of people took the PPP. Uh... If you haven't applied for forgiveness on the PPP, that is open. I think it might be open for round two, too, because they did two rounds of that. Um, but the IDL, <clears throat> what you want to make sure is you want to make sure you have it in the minutes. You got to have your minutes up to date. And in your corporate minutes, you have to specify that you talked over the IDL loan, that the signer on those minutes is authorized to sign for that loan. That's what you know. You need to have in there. Did you hear that, Dean? I did not do the EIDL. Okay, he didn't do it. But that's if you read all the all the literature on it and everything. Um, if like John says, I need some PPP to be forgiven. Well, all you gotta do is uh, go online. You know, because whoever you got it from should send you a forgiveness form and you just fill it out, John. And, and a lot of it's electronic. But the but the EIDL, which is a bigger loan that some of these guys got, they got to make sure their minutes are in order because that's where they can come and, come and get you on it. You got to make sure that your corporate minutes state that you talked it over, that you were going to do this EIDL for the exact amount that you, that you did it for, and that the person signing for it is authorized to sign for it. That has, if you're... Right, well, go ahead. I got a question, God. Yeah. So what if somebody's an LLC, they still got to do it? Well, do you have to do corporate minutes with LLC? Well, it depends. If, if, you're, if you're an S Corp and C Corp, for sure you have to do corporate minutes. Um, right. If you're sole proprietor slash LLC, there's you're really not a corporation unless you had to fill out corporate papers with your state. Right. No, I didn't take the idea. I'm just figuring out to ask the question for everybody else. Um, Robert Keck says, hello, I wish I qualified for some. For some what? PPP? Everybody qualified for PPP. Right. You, you know, you could have been self-employed as an owner-operator and qualified for PPP. Uh, all you had to do was put down there how much you make and you use it for payroll, most of it for payroll anyway. Uh, well, unless you started owner operator uh, after the pandemic, right? Like if you had just started right before the pandemic and the year before maybe you were an employee or a company, company driver, then maybe you wouldn't have been able to get it, right? But you would be able to get it for that 
Right. The second round, if you didn't do PPP in the first round, the second round come around, but they changed uh, the requirement in the second round. Uh, the first round, they did it on like net. The second round, it was on gross. So the, the individuals that came around the first time, uh, they went by a different part of the 1099. In the in your uh, tax your Schedule C. One of my drivers got some, but I did. You did? Well, first said you didn't up there. Cool trucking. What's up? Cool trucking. Two shows in one day. Awesome. Yeah, Jimmy Joe. I you know, I was talking to the dean. You know, I was talking to the Italian Italian before the dean. And I was talking to somebody else before that, and somebody else before that, and I had brokers calling in after hours. Uh, I took care of Bob, got him all squared away, his couple loads in the software. Um, and I was talking about the EIDL because I was reading stuff on that uh, online. And I got the Landline Magazine. I was going through all that stuff uh, to see what they're talking about. And I had one of the guys call me up and says, hey, did you, did you know anything about this minutes thing? About the idea, I said, yeah, I know about the minutes thing. You have to, you have to do your corporate minutes for your corporation, and you have to say that you were uh, had a meeting about getting the IDL loan, and that the signer of the loan was also the signer of that. So they're there to help you. If they contact you for that, they're going to say, hey, we need it to be worded like this. Even if you haven't done your minutes, they're giving you a chance to write the ship to make it right. Isn't that nice of them, Dean? That is nice. It doesn't happen every day. Right. doesn't happen every day, so take advantage of it. Because if you do that, send it back, they will send you corrections and make sure you have it exactly the way it's supposed to be. Um, so they're not out there to get you yet. They're giving you a chance to make it right. <clears throat> and anybody that took it, they gave you an extra year. So... Supposed to start paying back if you got it last year, supposed to start paying back this year, but now it's been uh, deferred another year. So, do you pay or don't you pay? Well, what if they forgive it? I don't know, who knows? Do you think that's a possibility, Dean, that they could forgive something like that? Uh, probably not. Well, you know, you know, the statistics are that, you know, over 90% of the of the businesses won't pay it back because they'll be out of business. Right. So I think, I think, uh, you know, with the things the way they are currently, it could happen uh, for obvious reasons, you know, but I think if smarter minds prevail, Right. Well, James says, can you turn up the mic a little? Hard time hearing you on the on my phone. Dude, turn your phone up. What? What? James. You need to trade that phone in. You need something with a speaker. All right. <laughs> All right. Anyway, um, but Dean, I think there is a possibility because look, look, how many times... Did you think that they would give what they gave? What did they give the, the American people? Uh, they gave basically free unemployment to people that didn't even work. Right. Right? You know, $760 for somebody that didn't even work, didn't even have a job. And then, right. the, then the people that couldn't go to work, they gave up to work almost 960-something was the number per week. So, and they've done that for a year. Well, some of it's still going on. Yes. Like September. Right. Some of it's still going on. And so you had that that they gave. Then they gave the PPP. Then they gave EIDL. I mean, they just gave, gave, and gave. No. Right, RN, 700 a week tax free because <clears throat> the because when I was doing my taxes, I seen it in the tax program. 
And it said that if you got unemployment, they, they weren't even counting the first 10000 against the taxes. So people that got it and got their tax state, they just got more money. That's right. All right, and plus no rent. They gave people no rent. That's why the housing prices soared through the roof this year. When someone went to sell it, they got one and a half times more than what their house is worth because there was no inventory on the market because there was no foreclosures. Right. And there's been no building all year. So. Right, so when's that bubble going to pop? we already seen the inflation, the credit card bubble popping because I read somewhere Wells Fargo took out away all the uh, personal loans. Do you read about that? Yeah, so what's that tell you? That's more of, well, that's more of, uh, I think that's when they got caught a few years ago with that scandal. I think they lost a lot of their clientele and there was no loyalty anymore. I think they were just having trouble uh, getting client base, you know. I think that's part of it. Right, but what's that tell you, though, you know? Well, yeah, they don't want to lend any money. Things could be getting tight. Right, Things they're, they're forecasting the future. They're starting to tighten up the reins. Uh, some credit cards are starting to up their interest rates. Yeah. Well, they're, gonna, you know. they're trying to avoid the catastrophe that happened in 08. So it could be hard to get credit. If you don't have good credit, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be tough. If you have good credit, you need to protect it for sure. For right. Sure. RN says uh, people on unemployment made the same after tax money as a person making approximately 60 to 65K a year. And that leads to another thing. That's why most of the fast food restaurants, you can't even go in and sit down because they have nobody to work there. They can only, they can only do the drive through And I just seen on the news that one of the Burger Kings, the employees got fed up and they all quit. They went outside and put on the sign. We quit and everybody left. And now no one's there to operate that restaurant. <laughs> yeah, <I heard> about <clears throat> but they're giving out 15 bucks an hour, 18 bucks an hour to work at Taco Bell. Yep. Like I said a couple weeks ago, if you if, if, if you're a if you're uh, if you're a company driver or you want to get in the, in the truck and I don't know. I mean, if I was if I was a company guy, uh, and I didn't want to drive anymore, or I thought you know enough is enough, uh, you know, honestly, I think now is the time. I mean, hang it up. We'll get yourself a twenty five dollar an hour job. Look at Wolfgang Puck was on the news on Fox News, and they said, "Look, we will give you a hundred and twenty thousand dollar a year salary to come work at our restaurant." Just, just a few weeks ago. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff people can do. Uh, and if, if you have a family and you're tired of the same old, same old, why not, right? Right. I mean, what do you have to lose? I mean, honestly, I mean, if you if you take, you know, 70 grand uh, and, and 70 grand, right? If you, if you take 70 grand as a driver and 70 grand being home, uh, it's you're going to make more money being home because... You know, there's a lot of things out here that cost money, even as a company guy. A lot of things are not going to be reimbursable. You know, parking, some companies don't pay for that. Yeah, we get free showers, but not every shower is going to be free. Uh, and there's just little things. I mean, it costs money to stay out here, right? Right. Uh, you can only eat in the truck so long. Right. Woo! USD, JPY just went positive, baby. Look at that green. Look at those candlesticks. Woo! Yeah, make some money on that baby. All night long. Um, well, I would like to know all the information that's coming out with the, uh, the you know, the drivers and the uh, drug consortium, sixty thousand drivers, and that's growing by two to three thousand a month. I wonder what the number is of the drivers that left the industry last year that just said, heck with it, I'm not coming back out, it's not worth it. Uh, and some, there may be some owner-operators in that group too, you know, who knows, but uh, I would just like to know what 
what is the number and how many do plan on coming back? Because I think the industry is really doing themselves a disservice by thinking, oh, in September, when all these free programs run out, uh, all these drivers are going to come back. I, I don't think so. I, I think I, I think they're a little too optimistic on that. <clears throat> it just keeps rolling upwards. Yeah, they're optimistic. Now, Eddie says, just got takeout Indian food. The owner says a case of chicken doubled from Cisco. Prices are going up everywhere. Wow. Try to build something. I called uh, some steel for some steel buildings and things like that. You know, I, I called on prices for that. They said they can't even deliver the stuff until next July. That's how far back they are. They're, they're booked all the way until next July. So I call another place. Same thing. Unbelievable. Oh, wow. it just keeps going up. Better buy some more. Get some. Well, that could be good for us, though. I mean, think about it. So if that's the case, those flat batteries will be busy for a long time. At least another year, right? Right. Right. Uh, I don't know if I believe this. <clears throat> uh, Trashy Trucker Show says, Trucking ain't that good of a gig. You've got to have it in your blood. I believe that because it's a, it's a lifestyle. Uh, the mega carriers have really screwed the industry up. Um, well, you, ought to look at so the, you ought to look at the ATA first. You ought to look at them. Uh, because they, they're the ones, so they're the ones preaching trucker shortage, and really there is no, there isn't a shortage. It's they have a retention problem. Right, but but you know what? When drivers say, and, and, and you know, Logan, when people say it's a mega carrier problem, I understand where they're coming from. Look, I, I was a company guy for most of my career, right, up until a year and a half ago. But look, I, I think what it truly is, is it, it's, it's drivers sticking together, right? So teamwork, right? Together, everyone achieves more. Okay? I truly believe that. If we all stick together, it's not a mega carrier problem. It's a driver sticking together problem because right. we're allowing those companies to take advantage uh, of, of certain aspects of of our life at, at, at any given point because we feel like there's no way out. So it doesn't have to be that way. And I'm not, I'm not pounding on the mega carriers, if you will, but look at it. I understand uh, the spirit of the, of the comment. And I do agree. I just think that we can avoid that if we all stick together. I mean, a lot of things happen out here, even as an owner op, and it only happens because we're not standing shoulder to shoulder together. Because truly, there's power in numbers, and uh, you know everybody wants to say, "Well, I, you know, I can't afford to shut down." Can't afford, you know, actually, everybody could right now if you got down to brass tacks. And just being honest with you, so you know, there's a lot of things we could all go do to prove a point. I'm not saying we should do that, but what I am saying is, let's just stick together and let's make the industry better. Right. <clears throat> because it's a good industry, but he's right. It's a tough gig. It's a tough and gig. I think it is a tough gig. And I think the younger generation, uh, you know, everybody sees the bright lights, shiny trucks. We all know that for all of us that are in the business, uh, it's not about that at all. It's it, it, There's a lot of stuff that goes on. And, uh, and, and look, it has trucking improved. Uh, since you and I got in the business uh, many years ago, sure. Uh, we have a long, long way to go, but, uh, you know, it's a lot different. Uh, and, and, you know, I'm sure you concur with that. It's just, it's a lot different and a lot of positive changes have, have come about, but we certainly have a long way to go. Right. Yep. <clears throat> um, you know, what's on the screen is, uh, Forex trading. Um, we're looking at USD against the Japanese yen over here. On this side, you can't see it, but we have the USD against the Canadian uh, dollar, and it took a huge drop. Um, but I bought a hundred thousand of that, so now it's got a nice uh, gain going back up. So we're gonna hopefully it goes up another 
30 pips and we'll get out. And we'll make some cash just like that real, real, real quick. In and out real fast. And then, you know, we'll move on to something else. But go ahead, Rob. I just well, had to answer look, the question. That's all. No, that's fine. I was just going to add this. So I was going to add something different, but I'm going to add something different now. So look, we all, during the pandemic last year, everybody said, oh, yeah, you know, we're heroes. We're, we're this, we're that. A lot of people said, oh, we can't go on. We can't shut down. Uh, you know, this, that, and the other. But think about this, right? What, go, as the year progressed, who went on strike? The unions went on strike. Many of them, right? But but the, the line hall guys, the OTR guys, oh, no, well, we can't do it. Uh, there, there's a terrible disconnect in our industry that those people are better. You know, they're higher up on the food chain than we are. I mean, it's a bunch of nonsense, right? So right. I just don't – I don't agree with that stuff. And, you know, I do agree the wrong time to even entertain something like that is when rates are bad because – that sends the wrong message, right? You know, you, you need to do it when times are good because that, that sends a better message that, look, it, it's more than money. And I think we'd all agree money has something to do with it, but it's more than money, right? And so, uh, but it's just, you know, it goes back to what you said. You got to look at the ATA, right? And who, the ATA is all involved in all those big unions, right? Why do they get to go on strike, shut down, and, and get all the perks but, you know, the stepbrother, if you will, OTR, you know, you're forbidden. You know, you don't rate and kick rocks, pound wet sand. I just think that, that that's just a terrible message to send. And actually, if, you, if you're, if you well, I think if you're, you understand what's going on, you see it, you know, clear as day, you know. Right. I don't know. I mean, back when we started, there was no detention, right? So the industry has come. I guess, uh, to some degree, a long way. But then again, has it really? Because you go to a shipper receiver, uh, they only pay. Think about this. A company driver, a company driver makes, gets detention. In a lot of cases, the companies pay the whole time that driver's sitting. If you're an owner-operator, you get paid for five hours or whatever the max is, right? Right. Uh, you know, come on. There's something wrong with this picture here. There is. Right. Um, Alex Express says uh, he's really dedicated to trucking. As a matter of fact, he got COVID twice, he says. Damn. That's a trooper right there, man. <laughs> <clears throat> Alex says, I'm steady looking at the stocks. Well, yeah, Rob's talking. I. What am I going to do? Sit here and stare at the screen? I might as well look over here and see what's going on. Um, it's at 110.703. You know, you could have bought in. Probably been up 20 or 30 bucks. Uh, but, you know, we didn't. We got in the other one over there. We already, we've already we already got out of that trade because you've probably seen the box pop, pop up down here um, for the sell order. Uh, but that's where that was at. Stare at the chat. Do you have something important to say, Alex? <laughs> what do you think, Dean? You got, you got something to say, Alex? Here, this is what we do on this show. If, if we don't like what you say. What am I going to do, Dean? What happened? What happened? We're listening to your W900 horn. Oh. Um, <clears throat> nice. What exchange do you use for Forex? Uh, I'm just swinging, scalping crypto, but not much going on. Uh, link to Forex soon. I use Ameritrade. That I've been with Ameritrade for I don't know twenty something years or so. Um, so that's what I use. I use them, and then crypto. I'll do. I got Robinhood for a, some of it, <clears throat> but then I do a lot of Bitmart because they have a lot of the uh, less than a penny cryptos, and I like to buy a lot of those and just leave them. You know. Throw 20 bucks here, 20 bucks there on them. Just let them sit and forget about them. Uh, right now, we're mining helium. we got a helium miner. Uh, we're starting a network here. we got uh, two more just north of us. we got three more down here just south of us. If you put up a big enough antenna, you can connect them all together. 
um, and mine helium and mine it at a pretty good rate. So that's what we're doing. Do you want to mine helium, Rob? I got a miner I can sell you. Yeah. yeah I bet you do. I do. You know, we got, uh, we got a lot of miners we can sell. Yeah. Better get into that quick because they're going to go from 50% uh, down to like 10% and they're not going to require you to have a miner. They're going to let you, they're going to send you one. Again, I think they're going to send them for free, but they're going to get most of it in that just for you to plug it into your internet. Right. Um, but then if you build, they're going to up your percentage. So the people that get in at the ground floor, they, they're going to get the nice part of the percentage. All over, yeah. I mean, mine, mine, mine. I think it was like five, <clears throat> three or four coins the other day. Um, I can go to the hub and see. Yeah, let me see helium. Past fourteen days, almost twenty-three coins. And uh, not even 30 days in, and got over 30. So, in <clears throat> mind, so that, that's pretty good. Uh, now, see, you got a little resistance here. It's coming, coming down. You see it coming down, a little resistance. Uh, you might want to do a sell here and then buy back down here because it'll probably drop another line maybe. Uh, but you can watch it, see what happens. You'd probably sell USD against Canadian too, uh, because it's got some heavy resistance over there. Uh, that's just my opinion. Trade at your own risk. Isn't that right, Dean? <clears throat> Trade at your own risk. But buyer beware. Buyer beware. And what I've learned in Forex trading, uh, I've been doing the USD Canadian for a long time. And even when it was at a 1.25166 where it's at now, 152. It went all the way down to like 1.20 or so. Uh, it had a bad couple weeks. It's right back up there. So if you would have sold and got, you know, all, all been out of shape because you're down who knows how many thousands or had to put more in or they'll stop you out, um, you'd be right back where you were. Or if you'd have bought way down there because you know it's not going to go lower than that. And you could have made a nice, nice, Upward movement. Red Fox says, blow the horns. So we got to do it. There he is. Why don't you come on in and join us, Red Fox, live. Anybody want to join us live? We're not going to be here long because this is our second one and, you know, something. We got to do something. Uh, Dan says he knew a guy that bought a new RV from cashing in Bitcoin. Hey, of course. <clears throat> you know, you got guys that were laughed at way back when Bitcoin was just coming around. And I remember it being $5 a coin. But those people that bought that and didn't sell and had 20 or 30 coins and they hit $60,000 a coin, well, you know, you can buy a lot of stuff at 60000 a coin. Can you not? Right. Right. You, you can buy you can buy that. Right, and see, the thing with crypto is, especially mining, if you get in early and you mine, people think you're crazy because you spent, let's say, three or four hundred or six hundred dollars for a miner, but you just let it sit there and a year and a half or two down the road, it becomes a craze on that one coin. And next thing you know, you look at your wallet and you got forty thousand dollar account. Right. And then everybody that was laughing. They're not laughing no more. Just like the people that had Bitcoin. You know, if you had 10 Bitcoin and, and people laughed at you because you bought it at uh, $10 a coin, right? And you, you spent $100, people laughing at you. And then now you're 10 coins if you still kept them. Even at today's 32000 a coin. You know, 320 grand, that's nothing to sneeze at, is it? Uh, it's not. Actually, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of articles out there right now. People are saying, look, the, the younger generation, they're not... Uh, 
they're not taking uh, part in those four hundred one k's. They're taking their money. You know, they're taking their money, putting it in uh, crypto. That's right. Yeah, Bella B. Um, we have we have some helium miners. Uh, check it out. Uh, if you can get them, okay. But if not, you can do the other thing where uh, it's just a less of a percentage. But if you grow the network around your house uh, to where you can connect to other ones, uh, you can do it that way. And then there's some other things. Uh, there's a firewall one that I just got, and uh, you put that on, so you got a firewall. But that's going to supposedly start mining also. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. Uh, OTJB sticking to rookie investing. Silver bars, baby. Silver bars. The Dean said he's going to invest in gold bars. Wait, wait. No, I forgot. No, sorry, OTJB. Not gold bars. He's going to invest in a diamond mine. Diamond mine. Oh, my God. Here we go again. Diamond mine because he, he's going to have a party horn. <laughs> Because he's going to put a ring on it. He's going to put a what? Ring on it. <laughs> don't let don't let the truck start up. And don't let the W900 pull away. Thanks for the super chat, Alex. Thank you. You know what I'll do with that two dollars? I'll spend it right here on Forex. See, I told you. Did I not tell you? Did I tell you it's going down another line? It actually, come down two lines. Look at that. So you should have sold here, and you could have rebought here. You know. I, I watched. I need somebody drive these seventeen miles for me, man. I'm tired. I watch this stuff too much. You know, that's what it is. I watch these charts too much. But anyway, we're on it. We're on it. God. What's our insane? Invest in yourself and pay off debt. There you go. There you go. Exactly. But right now's the time. You know, you gotta not look at you know. You gotta get, you gotta get that truck in tip top shape, save some money, get out of debt. Just the main thing is just get out of debt. If you can run a business right now, a clean business, just run a clean business, stay no debt, just now's the time because if, if, when the market changes, you'll be in good shape. Well, if you have debt and the market changes, you'll be in trouble. Now, you know, this last year with COVID, it was the best year people could have paid off debt because um, right. I know a lot of people that got the unemployment because they're making more money than working, right? Because they're out of work, especially restaurant folk. And I know a lot of the young kids and stuff paid off all their debt because they have, they're making double the money and they didn't do something stupid with it. They paid off their debt or they saved it all up and put a down payment on their first house. Right. You know, that was smart for them to do that because they're not going to lose money in real estate. No, I mean, think about it. If you, if you have credit card debt right now, whether you're, whether you own a truck or company driver or, you know, waiter, I mean, pay off your debt. That's that's almost better than saving money because you're not paying interest. Right. Right? Right. Pay off your debt. Uh, I mean, now's the time to get that truck. Just look at, Even if you don't need maintenance, get it done. Right? Well, Just get it done. I don't, I don't do credit cards. You know, I got some, but I just use my bank card, you know. Uh, the credit card is just there for an emergency because the more the more you, credit you have out there you know limit it, it raises your, your credit score right you keep your credit score up because you have all these open lines of credit with no balance right and then once in a while you're gonna have to put one on there so they don't cancel the card out cancel that balance out because if they take out some of that balance it could affect your credit score It's just, you know, some of your, you know, your cable bill, your phone bill, just have it run through that. One, you're going to get some points. And two, you keep something charged on it. And, you, you know, just include that in your, 
fixed cost or your your monthly bills, and, and you'll be you know you keep that card active. Right. And that will help raise your credit score also. You know what I mean? But pay it off. You just don't want any debt. You know, I I hope a lot of guys take heed and really either save money, pay debt, try to do both. Uh, well, yeah, I hate to see. You know, I don't want to see anybody go out of business. I mean, enough people went out of business. You know. Well, we have over here at Light Truck, We have the I consider the best contractors in the business. Um, the folks that came over. And then they moved on and done stuff like that. Uh, we just have a great group of folks. And, you know, Diane and Bill, right? On, on a serious note, I want to say thanks to Bob and Jeff for having patience while we were broke down for almost three weeks. Um, something happens. It's all right. Been there. That's, that's what you get. And Rob can contest this. That's what you get when you come to a company. To where the owner of the carrier was an owner operator for over 20 years you know 27 years somewhere there been in business 30 years doing this driving around stuff um that's what you get i've been there right i've been there so um we make sure that that contractor is not coming back sitting there in the hole right. right because that takes a lot of stress and anxiety off somebody and plus they don't need to be driving down the road when they're that stressed uh you know you just don't no, you don't. No. right because you know it's it's only money right it's only money you can always make more but you can never get your life back if something happens no that's right you know so there you go. Um, great folks. Well, look at this. See, it's even down some more. Look at that. See, if you'd have sold, like I said, look at this. Boop, 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 boop. Man, you'd be in some good money. Good money. And if I was watching that, like Alex said I was doing, but I started talking to the dean, I would have been capitalizing on that. Oh, man, of course. Excuse me. Sorry, I'm young. I'm tired. I got 10 miles. It's your fault, man. See, because you can see here, if you want to learn this, at the bottom of the candlestick, they started to rise. And when it gets so high, you got to try to predict the top, which you're not always going to predict the top. So even if you would have sold here and it rose up, you'd have been down some money. But look, you'd have been back in the money, um, not even 30 minutes later. And if you watch these candlesticks, it's about, it's an hour. So they'll go up and down 15 to 30 minute increments. And you can follow the movement. Um, Unless something really happens, you know, you get a big spike here, but you can see, you can see it right here. It goes up and down and then up and down. And from six, this two hour mark went up and then back down. 18,200, it went up, back down. Uh, eight o'clock to 10 o'clock is going to go up, down, and probably up and down one more time. Because this is when the foreign exchanges really get rolling towards the end of the Eastern time zones night, they'll start getting rolling. They'll roll all the way up until the morning, you know, and then when you get up, you get about two, three hour lag. And then you got the American, uh, exchanges will start rolling and it starts all over again. Sometimes the European markets get crazy. They get crazy. They get drunk, man. They start, they, they start spending. They get crazy, man. And then you could be on one of those rides and catch it. Because right. um, as it's you can see, breaking. it's coming all the way back down. It's trying some resistance. Um, and it might stop there and go back up. But like I said, if you'd have got in somewhere here when it started to go down, you could have rode down here and got out. And if you'd have bought, you know, 60,000 quantity, you could have probably made 100 bucks. Had a call from a driver, but not enough experience. Okay, so Bob has a, a 2018 Peterbilt, 579, I believe he said. Um, driving position open here at Light Trucking. We're a 100% owner-operator company. He has a couple trucks. Um, he's looking for a driver for it because he's going to buy another truck. So you can drive one of his trucks, 
dispatch yourself if you want and it's just like you're over here with your own truck you'll do everything just like you're over here with your own truck and it's a good way to learn the business hell yeah i would jump all over that if i was a uh, I, mean, I would jump all over that tomorrow sure. you learn the owner operator business and if you need help what better place to get help You have a direct line to me. You'll have a direct line to Steve Starr, Barb Starr's uh, husband, which he's a dis he's our dispatcher in the brokerage, and he's been in the trucking owner operator business for 25 years, also up in that area. So you get all his knowledge and expertise. That's a that's a great opportunity right there. I'll tell you, you know. Because we have we have guys, Dean. We have guys that come over and they don't want to call brokers. They don't even want to do the click and go. They just say, hey, Steve, this is how I like to run. These, I don't like to run at night. I only like to run here, here, in this area. And boom, it's done. And he has access to the software. So he knows how many hours they have left and everything. So he, uses, he, he utilizes 100% of their logbook time, you know, legally. And knows exactly what they can and cannot do and what they want to and what they don't want to do. And he capitalizes on their money. Oh, Greg, Greg just piped up. Uh, and so it's like the best of both worlds, right? Absolutely. I mean, to get that, he, to get an opportunity to come and run the spot market uh, without owning, a, you know, buying a truck, I mean, no, that's uh, our HE, uh, what is it, HE uh, double hockey stick? I'd be all over that. Right. Um, plus, plus Barb's, she's a great tax accountant. We give her website out too. And, right. you know, I help, I helped uh, Steve in them out as much as I can, uh, because he went through a tragedy and that's the type of person I am. You know, he worked for me and I'm going to help him out. It's just the way it is. Just, you have a lot of guys out there that uh, right. have moved on, you know what I mean? So, Just like Dean. Know. If Dean needs something, he knows who to call. He'll call me. He's got to run something by you? Yeah, sure. What is it? All the time. Or how would you handle this, you know? Right. I'm not going to tell him how to handle the ring part, but, you know, trucking, I can handle that. <laughs> ring part, I don't want no part of. I don't want no part of that yeah. because if that goes south, I don't want to be blamed for that. No, no part of that. And then we were talking, oh, Jason McIntyre, McIntyre Trucking, baby. Ooh, in the house. Jason, wow. Look at that. Um, so, I was talking to Dean because he's a veteran. And I went, to the, I went to the VA for the first time in 15 years. So, with the VA, everybody knows it's a rigmarole. And, you know, I had to re-eligibility, re whatever, right? So I just drove up to the hospital, went in there, did the eligibility. As soon as they found out I was in Southwest Asia, boom, it was over. It's like, bam, bam, you want to see the, want to see a doctor now? Sure. Boom, put me right in there. You need this, you need that. They've done all the tests. Hour and a half, I was back out the door. If I went to the civilian doctors down here, uh, to get that test, I have to wait two or three weeks, and probably oh, yeah. pay and probably pay two thousand bucks for it. Yeah, they've come a long way, no doubt. It's uh, yeah, it's a lot different than it used to be, and uh, I mean, with the outsourcing, also with uh, letting veterans go to uh, civilian doctors, whatnot, it's really helpful. So, and they, they've come a long way. And I got I I got service that I I wouldn't get at a regular doctor. Um, they gave me medication to take with me. Uh, and then they called me today, asked me if everything was going all right with it. Regular doctors don't do that. They don't call you the next day. Uh, and that's something new that VA started doing like within the last five, ten years or so. Yeah. yeah. So, well, anyway, we just thought we'd come in here and do a fast uh, thing. It's almost nine o'clock. I'm, I'm going to get off here and go watch some movie or something. Yeah, I'll, I'll be forex trading and, and doing some other work. All right. Exactly.
Yeah, we'll see y'all later, man. Yeah, yeah, that. Yeah. Show's over today. We did enough. Who knows when we'll be back.